Great, thank you for, very much for joining me. Um, Mr. Robert Hill, CEO of Life Research. Um, please, and, and, um, and the, uh, a pioneer in, in the revolution of CBGA. Um, we're gonna find out exactly what that is. That's cannabigerol A, like with the, the acidic form of, of cannabigerol, please. Um, Mr. Hill, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit, well, tell, tell us about what you do. Oh, well, thank you. First of all, thank you for uh, being Sorry. on the show. I think shows like this, Omari, are precisely the, uh, what we call the new medicine movement. We believe, uh, and when I say we, we at Life Research um, believe that we are on the uh, precipice of a new botanically based medicine movement in which we utilize the molecular, the ubiquitous healing powers of various plants, starting with the God plant, to essentially ignite our immune system and allow us to sleep like babies, think like grown-ups, and act like human beings. And I, I come to this whole enterprise as a trial lawyer who discovered quite by accident that they have now figured out a type four cannabis plant that does not synthesize its acids into the various distillates that your audience knows as THC or CBD or even CBG for that matter. And the reason that's relevant is it turns out that the molecular biology of CBGA, the mother molecule, which is really just our way of describing 120 trace cannabinoids and their terpenes, because it's essentially the oloctolic acid that the plant secretes to protect itself as a young plant. It just mimics our immune system. So essentially, Omar, what it comes down to is like attracts like, kind of like the first time you fell in love. You thought that was an emotion. Actually, it was neuropeptides. All right, okay. <laughs> and so what CBGA does is it allows that falling in love feeling to occur all the time because it provides our brains with the acid form of the bliss switch molecules that regulate everything from appetite to mood to sleep, the uh, anandamide, which is Sanskrit for bliss or joy molecule, and 2-AG. And it turns out that we have these neurotransmitters literally in every cell in our body. And what the CBGA does is it activates the regulation uh, switches in our body that essentially turn on and help us to enhance our homeostasis. So I've got folks that do sleep like babies, think like grownups and act like human beings again, including my mother, Omari, once who last had a positive thought in the Eisenhower administration. It's a long time ago. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so anyway. it has a positive effect regardless. It, it, but it, I, I, I want to touch yeah. on this. This you, you spoke about the um, it 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 it, it flicks the switch um to the, and and the anandamide and so the blue switches so, yes it, it, in it, our it, brain. The bliss switch. So, and that that would be a part of the endocannabinoid system. What what does the endo, endocannabinoid system do for our bodies? Oh, extremely. It it pretty much regulates everything. We think of ourselves as integrated physical beings on a celestial plane. To be candid about it, we're a pound and a half of minerals with electrons going through them. And that neurotransmission is occurring trillions of times a second because whether we understand it or not, the cells that I'm Excuse pointing me, can to- I, Sorry, can I, can I stop you for just a second? Actually, uh, and this is a lawyer talking to you now, but essentially as a physical principle of the universe, like attracts like. Right, right on. And so- like the first time we fall in love. <laughs> well, it, it is. And, and the bliss switches um, that, that regulate pretty much all of our organic, act, all of our activities as biological creatures are composed of 22 carbon, 37 hydrogen, and four oxygen molecules all combined. That's what we produce in our brains. Okay. CBGA just happens to have 22 carbon, 32 hydrogen and a COOH, a carbon, two oxygen and a hydrogen molecule. They call it the carboxyl group or the phenyl group. That's where the magic is, Omari, because what happens is the carbon and two oxygen, when we take CBGA, 
stimulate the production of anandamide and 2-AG in our systems, which is why we've got folks with sleep disorders now reporting 10 hours of sleep with two and a half hours of REM. We've got artists saying, oh my God, my writer's block is gone. Essentially, the neuropeptides that we need to be our best selves are activated by the acid form of that which we already produce. And when I found out as a trial lawyer that we produce the almost identical combination of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but it's acid deprived, well, there we go. So the CBGA, I suspect CBDA, THCA, uh, and the Varin acids, which are even more powerful, we believe are the literally the uh, compounds that can switch on our own production of the um, neuropeptides and peptides our brain needs to essentially wipe out oxidative stress wherever it occurs. So we have folks with chronic acne, you put our stuff on, it disappears. Essentially what happens is the receptors signal to the brain that there's inflammation and then a very, very complex and, and up till this point, not understood at all mechanism occurs. We call it the entourage effect, but it's really thousands, if not tens of thousands of interactions between those proteins in the compound and the receptor proteins at our endocannabinoid immune system. We, we, we have to keep in mind the God plant, the hemp plant and mammals go back 660 million years. We domesticated the plant in Mongolia and it spread west through Africa into North and South America over 12,000 years. And the one thing that's most compelling, I think of all, is that the plant's immune system mimics ours. So when we say phytocannabinoid and endocannabinoid, we're talking about two versions of the exact same set of uh, basic element compounds, except that we don't produce acids in our brain or we couldn't be human. If it gives us the acid form, we believe uh, that we're on, the, we're on the cusp of a whole new generation of healing medicine based on the cannabis plant. All right, That's I'm my story, Omari, and I'm sticking to it. That's your story. You're sticking to it, <laughs> right on. So, so tell me, it, it is it is it is the um, the acidic form that that makes that makes um the compound bioavailable. Am I correct? Yeah, and that's just it. Is that we're, what we're trying to do at Life Research? That's why our Life Research blog page. If you go to Life Blog, I have some really really good writers that understand this stuff way better than I do. Daniel Ghana and Chris Malaka. Yeah, now, come on, man. I've never met Daniel Ghani. He's from Nigeria. He writes like a dream and he understands that it's a complex interaction of hundreds of terpenes and can trace cannabinoids. And everybody's system is going to be slightly different. So you'll have, but the one thing is the acid form appears to have a dose response. Some, in some cases, one ten thousand. of, uh, so for example, CBD can, uh, prevent nausea in especially in cancer uh, patients and dr uh, sulak from maine who's just written a handbook noted in his clinician's handbook in in uh in the states that five milligrams of cbd produced a therapeutic effect in other words prevented vomiting and nausea the same reaction occurred at 0. 0.0005 milligrams of CBDA. Now that's just anecdotal, but it comes from a, a world renowned researcher. We are speculating at this point, but we have reason to believe that the acid forms dose response activates our system because we don't need redundancy. If, if the brain sees a molecule that it treats as one of its own, it, it binds to it again, like you did the first time you fell in love, Omari. I can tell you've been in love. <laughs> <Right up. laughs> We're still good friends, actually. But I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. That, <laughs> and that's the key is the CBGA wants that homeostasis. Regardless of the romantic love, you want the connection. Right. And that's why we call it the, uh, the mother molecule in the first place, because it's literally hitting on all cylinders. And so your oxidative stress will express different than mine. You know, interestingly enough, the COVID has caused 
folks in the states to admit for the first time that they're sleep deprived. Gallup uh, or Pew Research, I guess, did a uh, study or a, a poll, found out that at least 50% of all Americans are now admitting they're sleep deprived and have sleep disorders. See, see that, that's, 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 that's likely before, because before they're, they're always so active. You gotta, we've got to be on the move, we've got to be on the train, I got to get on the bus, I got to get on the road, I got to get to work, that this and this and that. And now that time is now gone. And they're like, well, I thought I would have wanted to sleep in, and now I can't. You know, is that, you know, it's well, that's, and, that's and probably, and part, of it. that's probably and, a part of it. It's like, wow. Really well, and, and what happens at those 2 a.m. wake up calls, I call them, what happens is, is that we have dopamine in our in our brains that keep us asleep, that's its job, and serotonin. And what happens is when, when your body tissue runs out of sugar, it sends an uh, all points billet into the brain, I need more food, I need more food. So the very first thing that the brain does is sh uh, puts a shot of adrenaline and a, a shot of, of uh, cortisol into the system. We'll wake you up, right? But here's the beauty. CBGA says, whoa, 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 whoa. There's another way to work this out. We're not waking up Bob's hypothalamus here over something that I can get you sugars from another spot. Right. right and that's the thing is it's, I look at it it's as a like, it's, it's like a regulator type of type of type. It, of and it's biodirectional. It's the only compound that it prevents the reuptake of that dopamine. So you don't wake up. And, and all of a sudden you wake up four hours later, like I do now, because I was sleep deprived. All lawyers are. I, I can't. I don't know a single Type A personality that isn't sleep deprived, and I'm 63. Right. But that's the point. Now I get that deep sleep, so when I wake up, it's like, whoa, I can handle my day now. Right. I, I, I do. I do want to get some samples. But one, one thing that I, I was reading it that which is different, I think, than CBD and THC is that it that that um, THC uh, CBGA um, binds to both the CB1 and CB2 receptors in the body because the CB1 is in the brain, CB2 is in the gut, or or either right, vice versa. I can't remember. Um, so how does I mean is that uh, my fact? Yeah, it's, how, what, is, you know, what what we have discovered it's it's actually and this is further confirmation that it's got to be the master switch. So picture a data center. Uh, I'll give it to you. Like Apple's got these huge data centers, right, with millions and millions of servers in them you know, taking up a lot of energy and basically doing a lot of activity. So treat that as though it's the body. If there's not a master switch on the wall for the building, turning on the power, you got nothing. CBGA doesn't actually bind with the CB1 and the CB2 receptors, but it binds with the receptors that regulate. And that's its ubiquitous power is how is something that the scientists say, wait a minute, it's not binding with the CB1s and the CB2s like the distillates do, like CBD does, like right. THC does, but yet it's affecting their behavior. And that's where the mimic ability of the compound comes in because it's mimicking what the endocannabinoids like uh, 2-AG and anandamide uh, or AEA is the research term for it. It, it, it basically is creating more production of those. And I believe over time, Omari, what happens is our brain figures out how to store it because it's fat soluble. So when you get our stuff, you put it under your tongue, it'll go right into your brain. Some doctors have told me personally, at least, that the brain over time will figure out how to store it because our brains are, that's why they're so heavy. They're 60% fat. Is it okay? <laughs> except for certain ready. members, you, you except for certain members the of certain your political body. parties in my country, that's a hundred percent fat. But we're not going well. there. <laughs> so here's yeah. the point: is that if it is the true that the master regulators, the GABA receptors, the TRP receptors, which we have on all of our cells on the exterior of them, and also in our mitochondria. That little thing that vibrates in order for your cells to okay. function, you have to have electrical charge coming through because what it's doing, it's regulating the, um, it's regulating the calcium ion uh, exchange in and out of the cell. That's essentially what its function is. CBGA basically bidirectionally modulates that to A, alkalize the tissue, B, clean up the oxidative stress that's been plaguing the tissue, and when necessary, turning off receptors like the uh, receptor that, that, that tells our, it, it's, it's called the TRP, or what am I saying, TPV, 
M8. It's basically the menthol receptor that got a lot of people lung cancer in my generation. CBGA turns off that receptor. Yep. And what happens and what happens when that receptor is turned off is that now the brain basically is in charge again of the immune system and the cancer cells can't prof, uh, they can't proliferate. And so when they're dying, the immune system comes in, uh, the T cells now eat them. So that's the whole thing about biodirectional modulation is it's not any one thing. And quite frankly, I think it, the truth be told, it's thousands of things that are occurring simultaneously. But with the idea of keeping that integration that Marley and, and, and any Buddha, um, any of the greats talk about that homeostasis that allows us to stay centered and stay clear. And well, so this, that, this what is, I like, yeah. Sorry, no, this, that's what I was, was about to ask you. Is it, I mean, is, what, is this um, like CBGA, is this something that you would, that one would take, like, <clears throat> sorry, if, if you are suffering from some, some level of ailment or an illness or a disease, yeah. As we call them, or I mean, is this not something that we should be implementing as a supplement, even in every yes. life? You know, like a like a daily vitamin. This should be your daily CBGA dosage. You know, you, you you know, know from the, the time that we're infants. I don't know. At some point, you got to ask yourself. One of those guys <coughs> on Friday asked me who who I wanted to play me in the movie, and, and I wanted the dude, right. and I'm still holding out for the dude. He understands, <laughs> he understands ca cannabis better than anybody but Marley, and. Uh, but they wanted John uh, Anthony Hopkins, right? And right, I right. and I was flattered by it. But I'll tell you, what I do see the look. Me. I will say that I do see the look. I, I can see the resemblance. Yes, I do. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> and it's getting worse as I'm getting older. But, <laughs> right. This stuff worked on the hair too, just so you guys know. So you don't have to have my gray. But my wife tells me it makes me look uh, uh, wiser than I actually am. But but here's what I know what? is here's, here's what I know to be true. You're right on. The Israelis discovered the endocannabinoid immune system quite by chance in roughly 1998. And they did it in a Petri dish. They saw how the molecules were congregating and what was interacting with what. Right, okay. The Japanese did one better. And they basically said, we now have hard proof, clinical proof, um, literally that CBGA activates that entire endocannabinoid immune system as nothing else can. Now, when did these discoveries occur? 1998 and right. 2002. Last time I looked, we're about to turn the page to 2022. And I'm a trial lawyer saying, why are we not using CBGA in our foodstuffs? Because here's the real cool thing, Omari. When we do the rosin, which is just the secretions from the trichomes, so it's a pure food, no solvents, no nothing. We just freeze them, squeeze them, and you get this golden oil that you're going to fall in love with, I promise. But it turns out we can now take that oil and make it water soluble so we can get it into mineral water. We can get it into pizza crust. We can basically get it into kids' uh, cornflakes. In other words, we can activate our immune system at all levels, starting literally from a one-day-old baby all the way up to my oldest customer right now is uh, just turning 90. He says, I can't see but I sure as hell sleep well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know, all right, right. Well, I mean, we, we all know that c cannabis is beneficial to, to just to the whole, as a homeostasis and just the harmony of, of the human mind and body. And this is why, I guess, I guess, I guess this is why we're, we're pushing it forward so much. Um, so what, I mean, well, what, to tell me a little bit more about the Japanese study. I have not, I've heard about the Israeli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, well, the basically the Japanese story. took, if you go to the abstracts of uh, Raphael, uh, Makayim or, or any of the Israeli uh, researchers from the University of uh, Jerusalem, I believe. Uh, and uh, you'll see that there's abstract after abstract after abstract, really starting in the 1960s, and mainly focused on THC, because essentially he started his research by wanting to figure out why THC alters the mind. Okay, wait, with so, psychoactive properties, right? Okay. And what, what, what about its psychoactive properties uh, is so stimulating to the brain, and what does that mean? So they started doing that research when I was six years old. I'm now 63. <laughs> so, so as they moved into the 90s, Rousseau, Makayam, the Japanese all started seeing, wait a minute, we're noticing that this compound binds with receptors. We've never seen that before. None of the others do. And so essentially what the Japanese did is they took CBGA, pharmaceutical grade, like we produce, and they basically 
did the studies necessary to publish uh, the abstracts that it's it's a singular molecule, which you'd think it would be Omar. It's, it's, when we call it CBGA, it's a misnomer. It's really, there's 120 trace cannabinoids and at least 100 terpenes in that compound. We, we have identified just a few of them. And, and that's why I think, why this is why I call it the God plant in the first place is God knew how to protect creatures on earth. That's why he gave us plants. So if we quit playing God, we might just find <laughs> that we, we might actually survive, right? right? <laughs> I think well, so. Well, that was Marley's so. point. You know, and by the way, my stoner generation believes that. But we went into left field because we never had a commercially viable form of the acid. The, when I tell you that the type 4 chemobar chemotype is profoundly new, I mean it. Because what happened was an Italian geneticist about six years ago mapped the genome of the cannabis sativa plant okay. and, and basically discovered the, the gene responsible for creating the enzymes to take the olive tolic acid and, and convert it to its neutral form distillates. Well, when you pluck that gene, you don't get the enzymes. So now I grow uh, Matterhorn plants and I get 19% yields of CBGA, whereas up till a few years ago, at least in the States, and I suspect worldwide, there was no such thing as a type four. Now we have it. Sometimes, Omar, I feel like I'm a, a crow magnet at the invention of fire, where I'm just walking around from cave to cave going, mm, fire good, fire very good. What is that? What is that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Everybody says, it. what the hell are you talking about? Right, yeah. <laughs> But here's the deal. The researchers know, the biochemists know, right, and here's right. where it gets exciting. They've never been able to either in a clinical study. So you have a really good uh, doctor in Jamaica doing clinical studies on cancer right now. His patients should be taking our stuff. We're trying to make relationships. But the biochemists have already known the acid form. If you could stabilize the molecule, lights us up like Christmas trees on, uh, on December 25th in uh, in the grill. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. right. Um, that's, that's, oh, I, I lost the thought. Anyways, sorry. Uh, it's all right. All right. right. No, I, I was, I was, I was, no, I was, I was, re I was, was also reading somewhere that be because the CBGA is kind of the mother, the mother compound, it, right. it, also, it can also enhance the effects of CBD and, and, oh, that's and, it. and so and so. This so is like, one of our most exciting finds is we're having this faux debate, this false debate in the States, which is harming the rest of the world. THC, no THC, Delta 8, Delta 9, Delta 10, you know, just why don't you make them football plays? Because right. Or movies, you know? Or movies. Fast or, or, exactly. Yeah. Just get out of my life because it's only a tiny little bit of the molecule. Right. What I, I, the, the way I like to describe this is there was a guy who lost his watch and he was apoplectic and the stranger comes by and he says, sir, can I help you? Yeah, I lost my watch. Uh, okay. Well, let's start with the basics. Where did you lose it? Uh, 500 yards over there. Why are you looking here? The light's better. See, this, <laughs> right? whole okay. debate, this whole debate is stupid because yeah. the acid form of the molecule, when I say it bi-directionally modulates everything, that includes the psychoactive effects of THC. So if you're a heavy THC user, and a lot of people in, in my neck of the woods are, yeah. what I like to say is I, I'm the product of the Jerry Garcia Matt Richard Nixon generation. <laughs> right? Did that ever happen? Man, well, oh, it happened. Behind closed, behind closed doors, behind closed doors, I'm sure. Well, right? and I'm it sure. did. And it, sure. and it ostracized guys like Marley when he was right. actually basically said, you want to self-act, you want to be as self-actuated as I am? I'll right. tell you how right. I got there. Rastas are not understood by white men. No offense. Well, they're, uh, they're not understood by Jamaican people. either. So. Well, and that's the whole point. So we went off in the left field. And all I want to do, and this is where my researchers like Daniel Ghana and Chris Malaka have moved the ball forward because they said, yeah, the type four plant will modulate the ill effects of the cannabis THC plant. So folks that are on medical marijuana and there's a lot in my country and a lot more that want to be yeah. and the recreational crowd that gets paranoid at parties <laughs> they don't have to anymore right that cbga will modulate even those ill effects it when we call it the mother molecule <laughs> i really want to call it the the grandmother 
because grandmothers don't put up with shit. All right. Oh, this is true. Like, no, enough of that. I mean, so, so what, what you're really saying, so, so, so what you're saying is like somebody can have an extract. Yeah. So someone, yeah, someone can yeah. have an extract that's a 98% THC, which is what some of them sell. I think that's ridiculous. Yes, that's ridiculous. Yes. Go, with, go with what the plant gives you. Um, 20 and 30, that's kind of the where the, the plant kind of tops out. I think that's right, the, right, the, right. the limit. But so you have, so with those, so I mean, so, so if you have someone who's taking that high doses of THC, if there is CBGA in that, they would not say just kind of, get oh, warm, you know. They'll get that warm centered feeling and that soulful feeling that right. they were looking for in the first place. But without the ill effects of the high, drifting away and feeling yeah, well, yeah. And, and the loss of consciousness. Because one of the other things oh, yeah. that CBGA does is it really does stimulate our ability to stay centered. In other words, observe our environment as we're living in it, as opposed to being so reactive. And I'm a Type A personality. One of the reasons I did this is to calm myself down. Right. You know, I, I, I was gonna, I was gonna ask about that. I was gonna start with that, but then the conversation got so interesting. Yeah. So how, how does it? How does a, a trial lawyer? You said. Yeah, so property tax. Pro property tax. Oh, that's even the worst. That's I'm sure that's that's, that's, hey, that's going to be the most amount of the most amount of lit litigation. What's going on between with property tax? <laughs> how much um, is it worth? It's not a <laughs> right. so, how, so how how do you transition from from that to um to you know to 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 cannabis? Well, what happened with me is because I I did mold litigation, and I had to study uh, the immune system. Oh, okay. And oh, the reason course. was, mm -hmm. well, and see, I, so I had, I had a, a neighborhood filled with families that had a compost site that went rogue. And so they had uh, hypersensitivity illnesses. So I had a 12 year old girl that had lesions, picture having lesions from your forehead all the way down to your toes. And all caused by overreaction of the immune system. Cause right. once she got whacked with all that anaerobic bacteria, Body is going to just try to fight and it in whichever way it can. Exactly, and I think that's the that that's the first essential step that we have to take into account. We're biological creatures, which means that we have processes that are perpetual and they're ongoing. And you you've had trillions of neurotransmitters telling everything, including moving your finger right now, right. <laughs> and we take it for granted. But if we slow down that clock, say, okay, let's reverse engineer why it's so easy for us. So I'll give you that example of menthol again. Um, the camel folks in the 1960s figured out that the menthol gene or a molecule rather would bind to that receptor that fools our brain into thinking cancer cells are not malignant. See, that's the trick. Right. That's not a process, that's a switch. Now, I, was, I was missing because cancer is something that grows. It's not, you don't, you might well be predisposed, but it is something that grows because of environmental factors. Again, it, it does. And that's the whole point is, is that yeah. what, what you're seeing, even with the vaccines now for COVID is there's, it's a binary process where up till, uh, up till we basically had electron microscopes and could map genomes, we didn't realize which protein was responsible for which process. Well, now we do. So in the sixties, they, the intrepids at uh, Camel uh, Cigarettes, I'm not picking on you, Camel, but it would really suck. <laughs> Philip Morris, they, it could be anybody. It's all good. Yeah, yeah it could be anybody. But the, what they did is they bound the menthol to that receptor. And so when you took a puff, even of an unfiltered, you thought it was healthy because the menthol told your brain, this is not harmful. Is that why there's mint? I would, I, I, I was, if, if I know what the vape, the vape the receptor is going a bit weird with the And so what the stuff. CBGA did is say, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. I got one function to protect this organism at all costs from all forms of oxidative right. stress and all foreign proteins, which is what cancer cells are. Because mm -hmm. basically what they tell the brain is, we'll just take a little of the blood. Just let us grow. Don't worry about it. Right. So what CBGA does is said, uh, you and know. it's the T, T R. VM8, I believe, receptor, it switches it off. Well, once it's switched off, now the brain's saying, what the hell are you doing in my body? Right, I don't want that. Yeah, because it's not good for the body. So essentially what the integration is, is that we're allowing this marvelous endocannabinoid immune system that we're all bequeathed with yeah. to function at its optimum, literally from the first day you're born until the day you finally rest. And your soul goes somewhere. And that's, and the reason I did it is real simple. When you're a trial lawyer and you find out this kind of facts, 
and then realize that you're prosecuting this on behalf of people that are already changing their lives because of our stuff. We've got autistic kids that aren't acting out anymore. Right. We had a heroin baby that they couldn't get her seizures to stop. They put two drops under the tongue. She's not had a seizure since. My 85 year old mother, my daughter who had a traumatic brain injury and is now regrowing her uh, neurons in her frontal lobes. Because we're, we're also using mushrooms. I won't get into it today, but we're, we're doing mushrooms. Essentially, Omari, what life research is about, that's why it's a small L. It's about your life, it's about Chris's life, it's about all our lives on earth. Because we think that there's botanical medicines that can basically make your generation live very productive, healthy, and centered lives. Oh, Unlike my generation, which is the most narcissistic in the history of mankind. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't think so, but, um, but, uh, but I, I'm going to, I, I, I honestly, I don't, I think, I think that the worst has been done before. I think, I think, I think your generation is kind of in a, in a transition between. Well, between, we got screwed up because and, we, we, uh, we wanted to do good in the world. The, you know, think about it. In the uh, 1960s, uh, peace this is, heart. well, yeah, you kind of did fuck up, I guess. <laughs> all right, you know, all right, I'll give you that. All right, la very last question. I'm actually running out of time. I didn't realize I had the sure. time limit. Um, but but from, from, from all that you're saying, it sounds, and I've heard somebody else say this as well about the, 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 the cannabis plant, that that's, there's some studies that say that there could be even levels of age reversal. And this sounds, this sounds like the molecule, the, the CBGA. This sounds like yeah, the it's that, a, would, that I, would do, well, suggest yeah. such a thing. Yeah, I think it's the cornerstone of, of a new building in terms of we can build on it. Just think about it. If your electrons are now functioning. So when I, when I said before that I assume everything's fine at the tip of my finger. Right. But if I were to cut it right now, that assumption wouldn't be fair, right? Absolutely. So if we can clean up the electrical transmissions from cell to cell and also clean up the ability of the aging cells to transmit the full DNA, RNA in the telomeres, CBGA allows, not just allows it, demands that that occur because when it mimics it endocannabinoid twins, it's stimulating their production. And that's why my wife sleeps eight hours a night now and she's an artist and hardly ever slept or she did. Again, it's basically, modulating all the neuropeptides and peptides. Omari, we're 7,000 neuropeptides and peptides. If we get them in the proper order, then we do live integrated and healthy lives. And that's what we're about is this stuff, uh, this stuff is the, it's the necessary ingredient, but we can combine it with everything from the distillates, THC, CBD, CBN. We can combine it with amino acids, to get human growth factor to start producing. So, so older people get the same cleansing at night that younger right, people right. get automatically. We're just at the start of this. And I think the, the real critical thing is you're in Jamaica and I'm in New Mexico. And yet I feel like I know you already. That's how we think we can get this done. So thank you. All right, and well, la this will be the last. So what's, what's, the, what's the next step for life research? What's, your, what's the next? Oh, boy. Well, we're moving. We, we want to get our stuff in the hands of the best researchers, the best clinicians, uh, start clinical trials. But we also want to get the compassion element in because like yesterday, I'll give you an example. I've got a friend out in Santa Barbara who's got quite the following because he overcame not only his own autism, but he adopts autistic kids and uses cannabis. I sent him 200 bottles of our best stuff yesterday. And yes, I'm sending you samples, by the way. I, I kept some back for you. Those bottles are going to be under the tongues of 200 autistic kids by Christmas Eve. And that's the movement. It's basically saying we got to get the word out. The only way to do it is shows like this and, and, and people like you. Because the truth is that if we get this done right, 30 years from now, we're going to look back and say, oh, my God, this was when we took the first step toward evolving towards a one safe world. The next stage phase of evolution. I, I have some friends, in fact, that I would I would love to see what the CBD does on their children. Their right. their children well, tell me, why don't you let me know how many you need? I'll be sending you a nice uh, 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 package. And and we have mushrooms. I, we didn't get into the lion's mane and to the other therapeutic mushrooms, but we can regrow our neurons. The CBGA recodes the myelin sheath in our brains, the right. viscous stuff, and then the lion's mane will regrow the neurons. So there's nothing we can't do if we really put our heads together, but it has to be a worldwide movement. It can't be this 
you know, he said, she well, said. One company, one company doing this, this and that. Yeah, which is, which is kind of what's system. happening in Jamaica with, with the. With the yeah, I know. Industry. And the synthetic versions of the molecule won't work. The body will treat them as foreign proteins. I, I was going to get to that as well. Um, but I'm, we are sorry. I, I'd be I know, I know. Um, but no, we're, we're going to have to pick this up. This is a great, this is a great topic. <clears throat> in fact, we, we're going to, we're going to, um, we have our conference coming up. I would love to do a, sp a very specific feature on CBGA for that. Um, but again, I do need to run. Thank you very much for your time. Um, and we will, we will, we will catch up once again. And I'm, I'm dying to get myself some time with CBGA and, and I will let, let the world know how great it is. <laughs>